Welcome back. Well, our next conversation is about what is really happening now. The campaigns have been flagged off by many of the political parties. We are in the campaign season from now till uh, uh, February 2023. So politicians will be standing before us and making promises, most of which people say they have not been able to keep over the years. And so what is the way forward? And that's why we're being joined uh, at this moment by a legal luminary uh, in the name of, uh, by the name of Jide Onugo, who is going to be talking to us whether we should, there are ways that we can hold our political leaders more accountable yeah. than we presently are doing. Mr. Jide, please, we are pleased to have you join us. Good morning and welcome to the run-up. Thank you very much. It's my pleasure to here with you. Uh, a lot of schools of thought have come up to say that uh, until we begin to hold political office holders accountable to the promises that you know they easily usually make during campaigns, uh, that development and progress and would continue to elude Nigeria. Uh, what do you make of this idea? It's, it's a very wonderful statement and absolutely correct well, let's start from this question. Who holds them accountable? I mean, basically and evidently too, Nigerians have not hidden their feelings about the absence of good governance in this nation. People have taken risks, they have been protests, different kinds of criticisms, but we need a system that will give us accountability, which is one of the you know, the tenets of good governance. And this system, interestingly, resides in the government herself. And permit me to use the case study of the United Kingdom. You saw that recently, <laughs> Boris Johnson, the former prime minister, was edged out of office. That is accountability. And it was the system that made that possible, a system where some of the parliamentarians started resigning from office, irrespective of the fact that some of them were in the same party with him, claiming that this is not what we promised the people. But do we have such in Nigeria? So even when uh, recently we've been having revelations that um, we are suffering from oil theft, that some have installed high capacity facility to steal our commonwealth. You know, the next news we heard is that the law enforcement agencies that should help us to preserve some of the subject matter uh, evidence and exhibits went to set the ship on fire. And so is that a system controlled by the citizens or by the government? So I am of the position that we have not been able to establish a system that we ensure accountability. And when you talk about the tenets of good governance, you have transparency, you have integrity, you have respect for the rule of law, and you have responsiveness to the yearnings of the people. You know, you have effectiveness and efficiency, and of course, absence of corruption and wrongdoing. And permit me to quote section 15, subsection 5 of the Nigerian Constitution 1919 as amended. It says that the state shall abolish all corrupt practices and abuse of office. So that is the system we are talking about. So when you make reference to the state, you are still making reference to the government. So what style, what kind of government system do we have in the nation? Is it a government that is permissive to corruption or a government that frowns at corruption? Look at insecurity, for instance. We need a system that we grant zero tolerance for kidnapping and ransom taking and the killings in the country. And in comparison, even in uh, uh, West Africa, there was a time the headers were trying to terrorize Ghana. And an instruction was given that you shoot at sight, you know, and they, they had to plead to take their cows out of Ghana. That is a system that works. You see, and then um, when at a point in time there was an argument about population of ammunition, uh, these ammunitions were brought in from Libya. I mean, that may be a correct statement to make, but why were they not taken to Rwanda? Why not to Benin Republic? Why not to Ghana? Why Nigeria? So we are yet to establish a system 
that is cleansing in nature and that will set us in motion for development. Uh, well, the worrisome thing is, of all the things that you listed as being part of what could be called a system, integrity seems to be the only thing lacking in Nigeria, or at least uh, one of the greatest things that are lacking in Nigeria. How do you go about repairing the integrity of people whose integrity doesn't mean anything to them? Because that is where we are right now. The laws, people have argued, are very good in Nigeria, and every other thing has been put in place. But the respect to these laws and following due process is what is lacking, and that boils down to integrity. How do we correct that? You know, for the purpose of um, argument, it's all about leadership. You know, because the leader is expected to have a vision and to keep people in the direction of that vision. And brilliantly enough, when this current regime was coming into office, one of the key factors that persuaded people was that the president was a man of integrity. And being a man of integrity means you walk your talk, like you say, in public relations. So if the man of integrity promised to deal with insecurity and restore security, to deal with corruption and restore righteousness, and to revive the ailing economy. And years down the line, he has not been able to do that. Then we need to find out what the true meaning of integrity is. And you see, some are quick to blame the citizens. And responding to such an approach to what we have in Nigeria, I want to ask what is the essence of leadership, if not to set the pace for an enhanced experience by the citizens to improve on the quality of life. After all, we have in section 14, subsection 2B of the Nigeria Constitution 19 as amended that the security and the welfare of the people shall be the primary purpose of government. So if you are, if you are stepping into that office and working with the MDAs and the citizens by extension who have given you the mandate to deliver then you must be seen to deliver on, 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 on it. So it's not just about promising. You must promise, you must promise and act on those promises. And if we bring it to the business environment, there is what we call returns on investment. If I have invested two billion naira in, 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 in a business, then maybe at the end of 12 months or 24 months, I need to sit down with those who are driving the processes that, hey, how far have we gone? And what is expected really is that there should be some profit, even though there are other elements of business like um, uh, growth, survival, you know, uh, staff satisfaction and corporate social responsibility. But the key point here are returns on investment. And if today, for example, the total indebtedness of Nigeria was about 12.12 trillion naira in 2015. If today it is 42.8 billion naira, then we should be worried, you see. And they obviously... We seem to have lost the signal there, but we're hoping that we can get him back. Uh, Barista Jide yes. uh, will be talking to us when we are able to re-establish that connection. But um, he said some things about uh, the fact that w citizens need to sit up as well and all that. But our laws, mm. our laws, a lot of people even in the legal profession have argued that our laws are very good. And people who have also compared our laws, the laws of Nigeria, to laws of other countries mm -hmm. say the laws are good. There's nothing wrong with them. but. Do a lot can still be done because in every, every country I think improvements can be done. Back, so Mr. Jide is back. Okay, Mr. Jide. Can you hear us? Yes. All right. I'm with you. Okay. Uh, okay. Good. So uh, earlier while you were talking, you said it boils down to leadership, and then you, when you went when you, you went ahead and you kept talking, and I, I could deduce that uh, leadership probably might not be enough if people in power are not able to bring this to the point where it is supposed to boil, what do you think the people can do differently? You know, I have I've had to talk about this several times. And permit me to also bring an illustration. 
traveling from Nigeria to New York City, we had a stopover in Abu Dhabi. Then from Abu Dhabi, we linked another aircraft to go to New York City. My sister, my brother, I did not even meet the pilot that you know flew the aircraft, but I met the air hostesses attending to us. And, you know, so and in an average flight, you have aeronautic engineers, you have at least about two pilots to support one another. It's not my business to now say I must see pilots before I enter the aircraft. There is somebody taking leadership. There's a captain taking leadership of a safe flight from Nigeria to New York City. And that is what we are talking about. But he is not expected to walk alone. So, and that is what I'm saying. But by and large, particularly in Africa, we have discovered that we have a central figure that is so powerful and may not be subject to control. I gave the case of the UK earlier. Boris Johnson, you see, sometimes when you see the parliamentarians grilling this man in, in the house, you wonder that, is, is it their house boy? You know, he looks, you know, intimidated. Or can you say the same thing about our country? So you, you may find a system that has been shielded from people demanding accountability. Let me say, I quite agree with you. If you look at Section 14 to Section 16 of the Nigerian Constitution, I think that amended and some key provisions there. If these provisions are implemented up to 40%, Nigeria may be the seventh richest country in the world. But they are not implemented. So who will take who to accountability? Recently, contaminated fuel were imported into this country. Is it the role of GDO to go and prosecute those who imported them? Who are the importers? Recently, this government said that they have identified about 400 sponsors of Boko Haram. Am I the one to go and arrest them and bring them to, to justice? Is it not the system? We have over 40 law enforcement agencies. You see, so now we are talking about oil theft. So these oil thefts are spiritual beings from another planet. These are the issues. So we are yet to have a government structure. And when you have that government structure, it should be easy for people to move in the direction of being patriotic. I mean, we have examples around the world. In Singapore, you know, you may not just chew gum in your mouth and throw it anywhere. There's a system that forbids you that once that environment should be clean. There are ways of doing business. Rwanda, in, in, some, in Iceland, in the uh, Netherlands, the UK, in the USA, in Australia, in Canada. So things work. I mean, if there is a system that our leaders run to for Medicare, then something should tell them that we can also replicate the same in Nigeria. So except we are now saying that government has no responsibility, then you are throwing it back to the people. And at that point in time, you should expect anything. Perhaps that is why we have lawlessness. I took the pain to find out what the definition of a bandit is. A bandit is an outlaw operating in a lawless environment. I will now say Nigeria is a lawless environment with all the documented laws that we have. So we are yet to put in place a system that runs. Permit me also to make reference to what happened most recently. The remaining captives during the attack of the train between Abuja and Kaduna were released. Thank God for that. Or none of the kidnappers arrested. I mean, so who is this? who exactly is fooling who? They have serious issues. It should not be so. The government should be seen to make laws and implement the laws. We have three arms of government. We have ministries, we have departments, we have agencies, and we have budgetary allocations for them all. So why are we where we are now as a people? Or are we now saying that those who steal our oil, for example, it's a government on its own, and they are untouchable. I mean, it, 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 should not, it should not be paraded about this nation at all. And that is why it's painful that the country that has the largest deposit of proven gas in Africa is rated as one of the poorest in the world. Yeah, it, we'll, it, it's, we'll not, to, it's not dumb. We'll have to get some more clarification on what you're saying. You're talking system, and... Obviously, what you're calling other, from other nations is laws that have been put in place. You do this, you get this as the result. You do that, you get that as the result. 
we have the laws here. What do we really need? What's, what's the root of the rot that we have here? What do we really need to do differently? Because the laws are there. So if the laws are there, what else is lacking? That's the major question we need to know and see how we can treat it. What we lack is to implement the laws. All right. If you have laws that you don't implement, it's as bad as not having laws at all. So how do we implement them? Because if they say, for instance, you are a bandit and you're caught, you're prosecuted, we have the police, we have the courts, we have every agency that is supposed to take charge of that. Why is it not being implemented? Or why are these laws not being implemented? That's, that, is, that is a question that is you know, really disturbing all of us. It's either because we have a weak system like I pointed out. You know that the former president of South Africa just returned from jail. You know, you have a similar scenario in South Korea. You know, so, I mean, even though the former president was pardoned, but he got to jail. So, how are we, and there are no consequences people before the like. We have not denied that some personalities imported contaminated fuel into this country. So, how many of them have been arrested? All we have are deniers. But I'm not surprised. We didn't start yesterday. I mean, I love history so well. In 1977, when our present president and commander in chief of the armed forces was the Minister of Petroleum Resources, about $2.8 billion disappeared from NNPC accounts, Midland Bank in the UK, no head or tail of it. So if today we are talking about billions and billions of Naira stolen in crude oil, and the fact that our refineries are not working and we spent about 100 billion to turn more refineries around. And have you read recently that the Nigeria here that is yet to take on has got about 47 billion naira of our resources? And you must also have read that the 2023 budget, we may have to borrow about 8 trillion naira to give it a support, a, a, a budget of about 20.5 trillion naira but with a projected revenue of nine trillion naira. So this, if you look at this, then it's either we have a visionless system or a weak system that cannot implement. Let me ask a simple question. If somebody imports contaminated food or a group of persons import contaminated food into China, what do you expect to see under the Chinese government? You see, so these are issues. So where there are no consequences, people operate as they like. Recently, the go between you know, the bandits and the those paying ransom was detained in Egypt before he was brought back to Nigeria. So, so what has happened all this while in Nigeria? Was it that the government has been romancing banditry? You see, so these are issues. It appears by way of perception in public relations that we are not serious about giving good governance its right or place. And unless and until you embark on generating common wealth for common good and maximizing the potentials God has given you, then you end up in failure. And so Nigeria is one of the most blessed countries in the world. So but look at where we are today. So it, 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 it's quite disturbing. So you need to implement. If, I mean, if you permit me to go scriptural, there is one popular uh, scripture that we like to quote, Joshua 1 8, that this book of the law shall not depart from out of thy mouth. You meditate therein. But the key thing there is that you do according to all that is written. So it's that do. We have brilliant laws in this country. I can let you know. Brilliant laws. And I'm, I'm challenging our audience now. Okay, Please, uh, after this program, spare some of your, your data and Google section 15 to 18 of the Nigerian Constitution has amended. And you see the great provisions to make this country great. Yeah. But you cannot even through the government on that. It's not justiciable like like we you know like like, like we say. It even says that you should be giving maximum happiness. The economy should be operated in a way that we have a self you know reliant economy quickly, that wealth is not concentrated in the hands of you. So just quickly, just talking, quickly Mr. Jide, just just quickly because we are running out of time. Just finally um, we are in the campaign season and this is the time to really scrutinize and know who best fits the bill so if you were 
given the opportunity to talk to Nigerians, what would you be telling them? What are the criteria to look out for in choosing the leaders that will lead us uh, tomorrow? Just very briefly, sir. You know, basically, look at someone that can give us the minus touch in the economy, someone that can turn our economy around, someone that can unite the people, because our motto remains unity, faith, peace, and progress, and someone that can restore peace unto this nation, so that we can enjoy the goodness of the Lord. Don't let religion or tribalism be your yardstick. I mean, we know the candidates, and interestingly, we know the antecedents. There is a need for a new Nigeria where there shall be rejoicing. So put all these key elements together as you go to the polls to vote. Okay. And we also expect and pray that there will be new narratives about our great country because God has not withdrawn our resources. So we still have resources to pick up from where we are now okay. and get better. After all, Rwanda has given us a brilliant example in Africa. Rwanda was in the pit, but right now, Rwanda is, you know, we're looking up. Things are looking up. There is one of the fastest growing economies in Africa. So, all right. and all the hate is gone. They have united. They are moving in the direction of development. Thank you. Let's Thank put you. all this together and let it determine, you know, to us what Thank direction you. we go. Thank you very much, Mr. Onogo, uh, Mr. Jide Onogo. We thank you so much for being a part of this show and enlightening us. Uh, we'll, we'll ask for more clarification some other time, but today that's where we will wrap it up on this segment of the show. Thank you so much for being a part of the program. Thank you. God bless Nigeria. So we'll take a short break, very brief break, and uh, when we return, we'll return with the news, and the program continues thereafter. <laughs>